The concepts of support and resistance are some of the most fundamental topics related to technical analysis in any market. They apply essentially to any market, whether that's stocks, forex, gold, or crypto. Now, while they're simple concepts to really understand, they're actually quite difficult to master and identifying them can be entirely subjective and they'll work differently in changing market conditions and you'll need to understand their different types. But above all, you will need to study a lot of charts and this lesson will help you get started. Now, what are support and resistance? On the most fundamental level, support and resistance are simple concepts. The price finds a level that it's unable to break through with this level acting as a barrier of some sort. In the case of support, price finds a floor, while in the case of resistance, it finds a ceiling. Basically, you could think of support as a zone of demand and resistance as a zone of supply. Now, while more traditionally, support and resistance are indicated as lines, the real world cases are usually not as precise. Keep in mind, the markets aren't driven by some physical law that prevents them from breaching a specific level. This is why it may be more beneficial to think of support and resistance as areas. You can think of these areas as ranges on a price chart that will likely drive increased activity from traders. Let's go ahead and look at an example of a support level. Note that the price continually entered an area where the asset was bought up. A range support was formed as the area was retested multiple times. And since the bears or the sellers were unable to push the price further down, it eventually bounced, potentially starting a new uptrend. Now let's look at a resistance level. As we can see, the price was in a downtrend, but after each bounce, it failed to break through the same area multiple times. The resistance level is formed because the bulls or the buyers are unable to gain control of the market and drive the price higher, causing the downtrend to continue. Now, how can traders use support and resistance levels in their technical analysis? Um, basically, they're used to identify areas of interest on a price chart. The, these are the levels where the likelihood of a reversal or a pause in the underlying trend may be higher. Now, market psychology plays a huge part in the formation of support and resistance levels. Traders and investors will remember the price levels that previously saw increased interest in trading activity. Now, since many traders may be looking at the same levels, these areas might bring increased liquidity. This often makes the support and resistance zones ideal for large traders or whales to enter or exit positions. Now, support and resistance are key concepts when it comes to exercising proper risk management. The ability to consistently identify these zones can present favorable trading opportunities. Typically, two things can happen once the price reaches an area of support or resistance. It either bounces away from the area or breaks through it and continues in the direction of the trend, potentially to the next area of support or resistance. Now, entering a trade near a level of support or resistance area may be beneficial to your strategy, mainly because of the relatively close invalidation point where we usually place a stop loss. Now, if the area is breached and the trade is invalidated, traders can cut their loss and exit with a small loss. In this sense, the further the entry is from the zone of supply and demand, the further the invalidation point is. Something else to consider is how these levels may react to changing concept context. Um, as a general rule, a broken area of support may turn into an area of resistance when broken, and conversely, if an area of resistance is broken, it may turn into a support level later um, when it's retested. So these patterns are sometimes called SR flips or support resistance flips. Now, the fact that the previous support zone acts as resistance for now or vice versa confirms a pattern. As such, the resistance of the area may be a favorable place to enter into a position. Another thing to consider is the strength of a support and or resistance. Another thing to consider is the strength of a support or resistance area. Now, typically, the more times the price drops and retests a support area, the more likely it is to break to the downside. And similarly, the more times the price increases and retests a resistance area, the more likely it is to break to the upside. 
So we've gone through how support and resistance works when it comes to price action. But what other types of support and resistances are out there? Let's go over a few of them. Uh, psychological support and resistance. Now, the first type we'll discuss is called psychological support and resistance. These areas don't necessarily correlate with any technical pattern, um, but exist because of how the human mind tries to make sense of the world. Now, in case you haven't noticed, we live in a staggeringly complex place. As such, we inadvertently try to simplify the world around us so we can make more sense of it. And this includes rounding numbers up. Have you ever thought to ask yourself that you have a craving for 0.7648 of an apple or ask a merchant for 13,678, 254 grains of rice? No. A similar effect is at play in the financial markets. Um, it's especially true for cryptocurrency, which involves easily divisible digital units. Buying an asset at $8.67.4 and selling it at 9.9765 just isn't processed the same as buying it $8 and selling it $10. This is why round numbers can also act as support and or resistance on a price chart. Well, if only it'd be that simple. The phenomenon has become well known over the years. As such, traders might try to front run obvious psychological support or resistance areas. Front running in this case means placing orders just above or below an anticipated area of support or resistance. Uh, take a look at this example. So the DXY approaches 100 on the index. Some traders place sell orders just below that level to make sure those orders are filled. Because so many traders expect a reversal at 100 and many front run the level, the bear market never reaches it and reverses just before. Now, trend line support and resistance. So if you have been following along, you know that patterns will also act as barriers for price. Um, in this example, an ascending triangle keeps the price contained until the pattern breaks to the upside. So you can use these patterns to your advantage and identify areas of support and resistance that coincide with trend lines. They can be especially useful if you manage to spot them early before the pattern is fully developed. Now, moving average support and resistance. Many indicators also provide support and resistance when they interact with the price. One of the most straightforward examples of this are moving averages. As a moving average acts as support or resistance for the price, many traders use it as a barometer for the overall health of the market. Moving averages may also be useful when trying to spot trend reversals or pivot points. Here's an example of the 200 weekly moving average acting as support for the price of Bitcoin. Fibonacci support and resistance. Levels outlined by the Fibonacci retracement tool may also act as support and resistance. In this example, you see that the 61.8 Fibonacci level acts as support multiple times while the 23.6 level acts as resistance. This is Fibonacci support and resistance. Now, what is confluence in technical analysis? So, so far we've discussed what support and resistance are and some of their different types, but what's the most effective way to build trading strategies around them? A key thing to understand is a concept called confluence. Confluence is when a combination of multiple strategies are used together to create one strategy. Support and resistance levels tend to be the strongest when they fall into multiple of these categories that we've discussed. Now let's consider this through two examples. Which potential support zone do you think has a higher chance to actually act as support? Support number one coincides with a previous resistance area, an important moving average, a 61.8 Fibonacci level, and a round number in price. Support number two coincides with a previous resistance area, a round number in price. If you've been paying attention, you'll correctly guess that support number one has a higher chance of holding the price. Now, while this may be true, the price could also fly right through it. The point here is that probability of it acting as support is higher than it is for support number two. With that said, there are no guarantees when it comes to trading. None. Not a single damn one. And while trading patterns can be helpful, past performance does not imply future performance. 
So you should be prepared for all possible outcomes. Now, historically, the setups that are confirmed by multiple strategies and indicators tend to provide the best opportunities. Some successful confluence traders might be very picky about what setups they enter, and it often involves a lot of waiting. However, when they do enter trades, their setups tend to work out with a higher probability than those that don't. Even so, it's always essential to manage risk and protect your capital from unfavorable price movements. Even the strongest looking setups with the best entry points have a chance of going the other way. It's important to consider the possibility of multiple scenarios so you don't fall into false breakouts or bull and bear traps. Now, regardless if you're a day trader or a swing trader, support and resistance are fundamental concepts to understand when it comes to TA. Now, support acts as a floor for price while resistance acts as a ceiling. Different forms of support and resistance can exist, and some are based on the interaction of price with technical indicators. The most reliable support and resistance areas tend to be those that are confirmed by multiple strategies or have what we call confluence.